Hi, my name is Brian Mayhew, park ranger at Fort Scott National Historic Site. Perhaps you've seen the movie Glory. It depicts the story of the 54th Massachusetts Infantry as the first African-American regiment in the United States Army. However, Hollywood doesn't always get it right. The first Kansas Collard Volunteer Infantry Regiment was mustered into the U.S. Army on January 13, 1863, right here in Fort Scott, Kansas, a whole four and a half months before the 54th Massachusetts. Organized as a state unit five months prior, men of the 1st Kansas became the first African Americans in the U.S. Army to go into combat and give their lives in battle. Kansas Senator and General James Lane began recruiting the African American soldiers in August 1862. Most of the recruits were freed slaves from Missouri or escaped slaves from Missouri and Arkansas. Because of this, many African Americans were proud to serve for the Union. They felt it was their duty to fight against the Confederacy and the powers that had enslaved and oppressed their people for generations. The arming of black troops was not popular in the North, however. Even President Lincoln was concerned the border states would secede if the Union allowed black troops in the army. This did not stop General Lane from recruiting these men. The Fort Scott Bulletin reported on August 16, 1862, Colored Regiments. General Lane is still going on with the work of organizing two colored regiments notwithstanding the refusal of the president to accept black soldiers. Last Tuesday, about 50 recruits were raised here. The first battle in which African-American soldiers served in combat took place at the Battle of Island Mound, Missouri, on October 29, 1862. 225 African-American troops faced 500 Confederates. Although the 1st Kansas lost 10 men and 12 were injured, they drove off the Confederates. While the engagement was not of great importance militarily, its historical and psychological importance should not be underestimated. The performance of the 1st Kansas helped encourage the enlistment of black troops and their eventual use as Union regulars. Guerrilla chieftain Bill Terman said of the soldiers that the black devils fought like tigers. Some of the African-American soldiers were officers in the 1st Kansas Colored before it was mustered into the Union Army in January 1863. Captain William Matthews and Lieutenant Patrick Minor were two of these men. Both men were leaders in the Battle of Island Mound and well respected and liked by their troops and from fellow white officers. However, when the 1st Kansas was mustered into the Union Army at Fort Scott in 1863, these men could no longer serve as officers and had to enlist as privates. There were other problems that the soldiers of the 1st Kansas faced. White soldiers were not always fond of serving alongside of African Americans. Regiments were segregated and led by white officers. There was a significant discrepancy in pay as well. Black soldiers received $10 per month and had $3 deducted from their pay for their clothing, while white soldiers of the same rank received $13 per month and were given a $3.50 clothing allowance. Confederate troops were also harsh against African American soldiers, as well as their white commanders. The Confederate Congress threatened to punish severely the officers of the black troops. Soldiers captured from black units were given no quarter, meaning that they would not be held as prisoners of war, but would be executed or returned to slavery. The 1st Kansas was just one of 163 African American units that served in the Union Army during the Civil War. The number of men serving in these units totaled approximately 185,000. Both free African Americans and runaway slaves joined the Army. African American units fought in every major campaign in 1864 and 1865, except Sherman's invasion of Georgia. African Americans made up approximately 10% of the Union Army and suffered high casualties. Nearly one in three African Americans that enrolled in the military lost their lives in the Civil War. Famed abolitionist Frederick Douglass is quoted as saying, Once let the black man get upon his person the brass letters U.S. Let him get an eagle on his button and a musket on his shoulder and bullets in his pocket. There is no power on earth that can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship.